How do you do? Did you ever know someone who seemed like they had it all together, the perfect family, the perfect life? Well, nobody's perfect. In fact, someone once said, we are all just one decision away from a totally different life. The woman in our story thought her problems were insignificant until one bad decision led to another and her world spiraled out of control. Then she learned that there's no shame in seeking help. And that's when her heart and mind and life were unshackled. Are you sure you can drive, Leanne? Yeah, I didn't drink that much. Hey, want to see how fast this car can go? Speed limit's 25. <laughs> Relax, Beck. No one ever uses this road, especially not this late at night. 80, 90, Whoa. woohoo! 100, <laughs> 110! <laughs> this is pretty wild! Watch out, there's a sharp turn ahead! Oh no! Ah! Leanne? Are you okay? Yeah, but I think we're stuck. We're going to have to call someone. Where's the nearest payphone? At the gas station, about a mile down the street. It's one o'clock in the morning. Start walking. We don't have a choice. Hey, girl. You look like you're in trouble. Need a ride? This is Unshackled, presenting true life stories produced in Chicago by Pacific Garden Mission. Ever since our doors first opened in 1877, We've been a beacon of hope for the men, women, and children of Chicago's streets. Much has changed in the city since then. More people are homeless now, and they face new struggles that come with a changing world. We've even moved to different buildings through the years, but our foundation in Christ's love remains the same. Because of His love, we offer hot, nourishing meals, clean clothing, refreshing showers, and a safe bunk for poor and wandering souls to spend the night. Staff members speak to each guest one-on-one -on -one to learn the unique situation that brought them to the mission. And guests have the opportunity to join substance abuse rehabilitation programs, Bible studies, and career development classes so they can get back on their feet and return to the world equipped with the tools they need to thrive in their personal and professional lives. All mission programs and services come free of charge thanks to generous financial gifts from listening friends like you. Now for broadcast around the earth, here is episode number 3,645 in the series Unshackled, the program that makes you face yourself and think. With so many big problems in the world, who cares about the struggles of one troubled teenager? As Rebecca Kahn found out, no problem is too small for a true friend to care about. Listen as we bring you her true story, right now on Unshackled. You might say my early years were basically trouble-free. My parents loved me and sent me to a private Christian school. My brothers and sisters and I all got along and had everything we needed. Growing up in my family was a blast. Now, who wants to participate in the fishing contest? Oh, me, 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 Becky, Becky, you're too little. Maybe in a couple of years. Please, Daddy, why don't you give her a chance, dear? Well, all right. Now, just hold it like this. Now, when you feel it pull, that means... I feel that... something. I caught a fish. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Reel it in. Reel it in. I can't. He's too big. Here. Let me help. Let me help. Oh. Oh. Really wow, that's a big one. Look at that. I'm sorry I doubted you, Becky. You may be small, but you can do anything if you're determined enough. Yeah. I had love, financial security, and even popularity. My friends included me in parties and fun activities, so I never moped around alone on the weekends. One night, though, in my freshman year of high school, I made a decision that changed my life's trajectory. Oh, 
Your turn, Rebecca. Truth or dare? Mm, truth? Okay. Have you ever smoked pot? <laughs> no way. What do I look like? Some kind of burnout? <laughs> Rebecca, do I look like a burnout? Or Kim? Or anyone else here? No. Right. We've all tried it. No way. Yeah. We'll show you. Hey, Kim, give her a joint. I don't believe this. You drink wine coolers. It's not any worse. In fact, it's a lot more fun. Here. Um... You watch too many after-school specials. Okay. <laughs> Pass it around. <laughs> Look at Sam. Dancing over there in the corner with his strobe light. <laughs> what a fast. <laughs> and do you have a camcorder? Yeah, let me go get it. We have to capture this moment on tape. That night, marijuana didn't seem like the addictive drug I've seen portrayed in after-school specials. When I smoked with my friends, we laughed, ate junk food, and fell asleep. I wondered what could be so wrong with that. So from then on, whenever my parents went away for the weekend, I threw a big party at my house. We convinced an adult to buy us liquor, and whenever possible, we had weed on hand. Sometimes we'd party so hard we couldn't remember what we did but we often recorded ourselves on tape to refresh our memories later. Sophomore year, my parents sent me to a Christian preparatory boarding school. We caught her in the park smoking marijuana and drinking. Claimed she's 18, but her school ID says otherwise. Thank you for bringing her back, officer. Your school has a fine reputation. We trust that you will discipline her appropriately. Yes, sir. Thank you for your understanding. Okay. Take care, Dean Weber. Again, Rebecca? You're already on probation for your grades. I'm very disappointed. I'm sorry. I'm so lonely here. I miss my parents. I just wanted an escape. Rebecca, many students miss their parents, but this is a college prep school. What's going to happen to you when you go to college in a couple years? If you get there. I know. If your experience here is so stressful that you feel the need to drink and do drugs then perhaps this school isn't the best fit for you. Please, Dean Weber, give me another chance. Okay. The Lord believes in second chances, though this is more like your third or fourth, but we all want to see you reach your potential. Oh, thank you so much. Rebecca, keep your focus on your studies, and especially God's Word. When you feel lonely, just open your Bible. I graduated from that school, but when the excitement wore off, I felt lost. Academics were a breeze compared to the real world. In school, I always knew what to read, what to write about, when I'd be tested, and what I'd be tested on. Now, I lacked any guidance on what to do with my life. You can guess what I did next. Of course you can move back in with us, honey. You always have a home here. Thanks, Mom. I just don't know where else to go. You know, the Lord will show you if you just ask, ask him. him. I know. But something's missing in my life. Which you're trying to find in drugs and alcohol. I know. The school called us. Oh. Becky, things like that only make you feel good for a short time. God can fill that void for good. Mom, I heard all about that stuff in school. I just don't connect with it. God is so far away. How can I know that he's even listening to me? He's waiting to hear from you, to every prayer, no matter how small. And all things, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. That's hard to believe. I'm going to write about your need for direction in my prayer journal, and I'm going to pray for you tonight, like I do with all you kids. Just don't give up, okay? I appreciated my mom's efforts, but I thought I'd fit in better at my sister's house. She lived with her boyfriend, and the two of them loved to party. One night, her boyfriend's boss gave him a present for all of us to share. This is so good. Do you want to try a line, Rebecca? Uh, pot's one thing, but cocaine's... The pot's nothing compared to cocaine. It's a totally different high. Isn't it addictive? <laughs> yeah, it is. Once I tried cocaine, I was hooked. I still didn't have a job at this point, so to support my habit, 
I borrowed money from my brother and stole checks from my dad's checkbooks. Just like the booze and weed, I was using cocaine to fill that missing thing in my life. But once again, every time the high wore off, I felt even more empty than before. When my dealer's supply dried up, I just reverted back to the marijuana and alcohol. I brought a keg and I made some pot brownies. <laughs> Let's give some to the dog. Yeah, that would be hilarious. My parents let me borrow their car while they're away for the weekend. When we're done here, want to go for a ride? Sure. As my friend and I drove that night, she wanted to see how fast the car would go. She accelerated to 110 miles per hour. Then, as we approached a sharp turn in the road, she slammed on the brakes and the car flew into a ditch. We weren't injured, but we had to call for help. In the 1980s, with no cell phones, we had no choice but to walk down a dark country road to find a payphone and call for help. Hey, girls, you look like you're in trouble. Need a ride? Let's keep walking. I'm getting tired. We should take the ride. There's strength in numbers. I don't know, Leanne. Please. I'm exhausted. We'll be fine. Okay. Thank you, sir. That's very kind of you. Can you take us back to my sister's house? It's just two miles down the road. All right, all right. Let me just get turned around here. Kind of late to be out, huh? Is this the right... No. Hey, we're going the wrong way. Can you turn around? Don't worry. I'll get you where you need to go. First, I gotta pull over here and pick up something from a friend. Won't take long. I don't like this, Rebecca. Just stay close to me. He's coming around to my side. Stop! What are you doing? I'm doing you a favor. You owe me something in return. Come on! Get, just, hey. Get uh, off of me! Oh. Hey, leave her alone! Oh. Ow. Ow. Beck, open the door! Hurry up! Run! Hey, come back here! God, please help us! Help us! Help us, please! This car won't start! It's a miracle! God, please help! I promise I'll be a good Christian! I'll stop doing drugs! Uh, you, you better get back here! Go! Go! He's chasing us! Look! There's a house up ahead. Let's knock on the door. They'll be asleep. What else can we do? Help! 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 What do you want? Call the police. Please. Someone's chasing us. You won't get away this time. Hurry. We'll learn what happened to Rebecca and her friend in just a moment. Right now, though, I'm with Pacific Garden Mission President Phil Kwiatkowski to share some exciting new things that are happening here. Welcome, Phil. Thanks, Timothy. Could you share with our listening friends how they can play an active role in our ministry? I'd be happy to. First, we depend on our listeners to help us build our refuge of hope. Many who seek solace here at the mission end up leaving with a valuable gift that's free to everyone, no matter how old they are or where they come from. Anyone from anywhere, huh? Yep. In fact, one mission guest, Bethany, who started drinking at a young age, came through our doors. Oh, just like Rebecca in our story. Right. Bethany says, I knew it was becoming a problem because I would want to drink all day, every day. I was trying to numb the pain that was inside of me. And what's happened to Bethany? She realized that she needed to change when her father started having heart troubles. He told her about Pacific Garden Mission. So she came to see us. And how's she doing now? Good news. She completed our 90-day addiction recovery program, Bethany says, being here helped me not to only forgive other people, but also to forgive myself. In the past, I wasn't happy with myself, but now I can turn to God and ask Him for help. I'm nothing but grateful to have that. If I pray and talk to the Lord, it gives me peace instead of turning to substance to deal with the pain. Oh, praise God. So how can our listeners be a part of helping someone like Bethany? The mission's rehabilitative programs and actually all of our services are free to our guests thanks to generous gifts from our listeners. And if they wanted to make a donation today? The easiest way to donate is to visit the mission's website at pgm.org and click on the big red Donate Now button or write out a check to Pacific Garden Mission. 
and mail it to us at 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. And if you'd prefer to make a donation over the phone, our phone number is 312-492-9410. When my friend and I knocked on that stranger's door for help, they refused to let us in. I can't blame them for that. It was the middle of the night, and they didn't know who we were or what we wanted. Thankfully, they called the police, and they arrived just as the man caught up to us. When I returned home, I headed straight for the bathroom and threw up. I was aware that the night could have turned out so much worse. God had answered my prayers. I knew that but I still wasn't sure about keeping my promise to serve him. I'm so glad you found that new job, honey. I appreciate that, Mom. But my life doesn't seem to be getting better. What's wrong? Something strange is going on with my health. I have to use the bathroom all the time. And yesterday at work, I started bleeding. Did you see a doctor? I'm planning to. Mom, why would God allow this to happen to me? Is he punishing me for my drinking and drug use? I don't think he's punishing you. However, the Lord will allow trials and challenges in our lives to bring us closer to him. Keep praying. I am. As I looked at the stars that night, they seemed brighter and more beautiful than ever. I started thinking about my life and the mess I had made of it. I thought I had messed things up so much there was no way out. So, feeling desperate, I looked up into the sky and prayed. Oh God, if you're up there, please help me. I still felt hopeless after I prayed. I thought, God is so far away and I'm probably not even on his radar. Why would he help someone like me? Then a friend called with some shocking news. Beck, did you hear about Kim? No, I haven't talked to her since high school. Well, she died in a diving accident. What? How how did that happen? She was a great swimmer. Yeah, well, you know she had a drinking problem. She had a lot to drink that night and she drowned. Whoa! Whoa! Did you hear that? Yeah, I hear another voice on the line. That is creepy. Hey, whoever you are, this isn't funny. Stop listening into our call. I know this will sound crazy, but suddenly the voice spoke clearly. It said, Becky, this is your guardian angel. Stop doing drugs or pay the consequences. Become a Christian, read your Bible, pray to God tonight. Then the voice said, God loves you. Those three words shocked me. Not only that they were coming through the phone, but that they might be true. I didn't know what to make of it all. I wasn't hallucinating. My friend heard the voice, too. At first, we thought someone played a joke on us, and considering that our friend had just died, we thought it was in rather poor taste. But I still couldn't shake what happened. Why are we doing this again? I'm trying to live a healthier lifestyle. Maybe I can replace my cravings for alcohol with something more wholesome, like exercise. What brought this on? Well, Kim's death, for one. And that voice on the phone, it struck a chord with me. Don't tell me you actually believed that stuff. Did you find out who did that? It was your brother, right? He's such a dweeb. No, I was home alone. I even called the telephone operator about it. She said that telephone lines used to get crossed in the old days, but not anymore. There's no way for anyone to get in on someone else's line during a conversation. I'd get a second opinion. Or maybe it was your guardian angel. Ooh, I am really uncomfortable all of a sudden. I know the feeling. Let's take a break and get some ice cream. No, I mean it. Something's weighing on my mind. I have to go home and take care of it. Catch you later, Leanne. Okay. Say hi to your guardian angel for me. As soon as I got home, I ran straight to my bedroom. Then I fell on my knees and approached God in prayer. Dear Lord, help me overcome my unbelief. I admit that I have done a lot of bad things in my life. Please forgive me. Come into my heart and guide my life so that I can fulfill your plan for me. I don't want to carry this weight anymore. Please, Jesus. Amen. 
I heard a twinkling sound. A wind chime was turning in my room, even though the windows were closed and no air was blowing. The weight I'd been carrying lifted away, and for the first time in my life, I truly sensed the Lord's presence. I had finally committed myself to Jesus Christ. Instead of running my own life and doing everything my own way, I vowed to let Christ lead the way. I knew that such a drastic lifestyle change would take daily commitment, so I asked my mom for guidance. Rebecca, I had faith that the Lord would answer my prayers. I should have listened to you earlier, Mom. I didn't think he'd care about someone as small as me. Do you remember that fishing trip we took when you were 10 years old? The one where Dad thought I was too little to catch a fish? Right. He didn't even want me to participate in the contest. Well, I remember you told me that you said a prayer asking God to help you catch the biggest fish on the boat. And I did. I caught a huge fish. And your father mounted it on a plaque. Huh. Thanks, Mom. From now on, every time I look at that plaque... I'll remember that God is always listening to our prayers, no matter how insignificant they may seem. And the more you read your Bible, the more you'll see that's true. You're going to read your Bible to me again, aren't you? Yep. Now, you remember Abraham, right? Of course. God called him his friend because he was so faithful to him. Right here in James chapter 2, verse 23. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith... Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Abraham believed what God told him, even when it seemed impossible. Hmm. I would love to be friends with God. You can. Ever thought about taking Bible classes to study his word? Not up to now, but I suppose I could. I've been reading about Moody Bible Institute. They offer evening classes. You could work on your degree after work. What do you think? I attended Moody Bible Institute, and it was there I met my husband, Ilif Edgar Khan, a hardworking man and pastor's son who came to the United States from Pakistan in 1986. After he finished his Master's in Divinity, we served at five churches together. Ilif leaned on the Lord no matter what he went through. I was thankful for this, since after the birth of our first and only son, we endured one of the greatest trials of our lives. I know you've been having some pain in your leg. Yes, doctor. A friend at church invited me to go horseback riding, and when we finished, my left leg was all pins and needles. Well, I have the results of your MRI. Here, you might want these. Tissues? It must be bad news, then. I'm afraid so. You have multiple sclerosis. <sighs> I cried a lot after hearing my diagnosis, and my symptoms only grew worse. Sometimes I lost my balance, and other times I felt a fire burning in my legs. In those times, I turned to my Bible for comfort. The Lord put Isaiah 43, 1 and 2 on my heart. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Only the Lord could bring such comfort through so much pain. I believe that my suffering brought me closer to him. More recently, the Lord blessed me with great healing. My last MRI showed that my multiple sclerosis has significantly improved. I know that I wouldn't be here today without God's protection and guidance. And if I didn't follow his plan, I never would have met my husband or had my son who have given me the love and support I needed to endure difficult times. I am blessed to say I can honestly call Jesus my best friend. Everyone matters to God, no matter how insignificant they think they are. He is waiting patiently for your prayers. 
But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Listening friend, are you ready to take the very serious step of making Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? If you are, why not do so now? Receiving Jesus as your Savior is not something you accomplish through a specific set of words, but rather through the honest confession of your heart. If you are ready to repent of your sin, surrender your life to God, and follow His guidance, won't you pray with us now? Heavenly Father, I know that I am a sinner and that I am in need of you. I have done so many bad things in my life, but I know you and only you can help me become a better person. Please come into my heart and forgive me. I want to have a relationship with you. Guide my path so that I can fulfill your plan for me. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed with us just now, we would love it if you would reach out and let us know. When you do, we'll send you free literature on what it means to follow Christ and to grow in your relationship with Him. Our address, Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. A telephone number in Chicago, 312-492-9410. Our email address is unshackled at pgm.org. Visit our website to learn more about this ministry, unshackled.org. If you're curious about the Unshackled app, here's what Edwin had to say. One of the very best apps anyone can ever have, use, and share. I love Unshackled. Crystal also wrote, I love Unshackled and I'm so thankful that there is an app for this program. I'm always encouraged in my faith by the testimonies. Praise God for this ministry. Well, thank you, Crystal, for letting us know how we're doing and encouraging us in our ministry. And if you would like to download the app, just search for Unshackled in any of the major app stores. Every week, Unshackled is heard in the 50 states and around the world on great radio stations like KAKO, Ada, Oklahoma, and WOTJ, Lexington Park, Maryland. Thank you to the listeners and station managers in these areas for being such a big part of our ministry. And if you're listening in on the radio now, don't forget to thank the manager of your station for bringing you Unshackled. This is program number 3,645, heard in the true story of Rebecca Kahn were Tina Glushenko, Brad Armacost, Cynthia Judge, Jennifer Dimmitt, and Evan Armacost. Original music and audio engineer, Don Badorf. Recording engineer and sound effects, David Pierczynski. Script, Chrissy Spallone. Unshackled is produced by Pacific Garden Mission to show through true stories that if your life is empty, it can be filled to overflowing. Please write today. Your letter means a great deal to us. The address, Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. So until next time, unless our Lord returns before then, I'm Timothy Gregory, reminding you that the doors to Pacific Garden Mission are open night and day. Thanks for listening, and may God bless you. 